Hi everyone, today we will see one more experiment for transistor characteristics. So in this experiment we are going to study the characteristics of an NPN transistor. We know that there are two types of transistors NPN and PNP. So in this experiment we are studying only NPN type of transistor characteristics. Okay, now let us see what is a transistor is. A transistor is a three terminal semiconductor device which are emitter, base and collector. So this is the transistor in which these three are the emitter, base and collector. To identify the emitter we use this, a sharp edge, a notch is there, the terminal nearer to this is an emitter, the next one is the base and the last one is the collector. So this transistor is connected here. Now let us see the circuit diagram which is used to study the characteristics of the transistor. So this is the circuit connection, this is the symbol of the transistor, an NPN transistor. The NPN transistor is connected in a common emitter mode configuration. That is emitter terminal is common for both input and output. So this is the input source, this is the output source. The base current, the current to the base is called the input current and the voltage across base and emitter is called input voltage. The collector current, the current through the collector is the output current and the voltage across collector and emitter is the output voltage. For a transistor, we can study three types of characteristics. One is input characteristics, output characteristics and transfer characteristics. So input characteristics means variation of input current that is base current with respect to the variation of input voltage that is base emitter voltage when we keep the output voltage constant that is variation of base current with respect to the variation of base emitter voltage when the output voltage we see is a constant and the output characteristics is variation of output current when the, with respect to the variation of the output voltage that is we see when the input current is kept constant. Next the transfer characteristic is that the variation of output current with respect to the variation of input current that is variation of IC with respect to the variation of IB when the output VC is kept constant. Now let us see how to connect the circuit and take the readings. This is the circuit board, the ready kit which is used to study the characteristics of the transistor. So this kit involves all the components required and the transistor is connected here. This is the input source which can be varied. If you rotate this input so voltage can be varied and this is the output source. These two knobs can be used to increase or decrease the output voltages. And here is a micro-ammeter to measure the base current and this is a milliammeter which can be used to measure collector current and this is an voltage source which can be used to measure the output voltage. So here we need a two, we need two voltmeters to measure base emitter voltage and collector emitter voltage but we have only one. So we use another external multimeter to measure the base emitter voltage. This is, this is a multimeter with the help of this we can measure many quantities. So if you turn the knob towards this side, so this the symbol V and a straight line indicates that this is DC voltage and we can measure DC voltage from 200 millivolts to 600 volts. So these are the range of voltages that we can measure for a DC voltage. And the other side we can see the AC voltage. So we can measure 200 or 600 maximum of up to 600 of AC voltage we can measure. And then here we can see the A symbol that indicates current. So current can be measured from 200 micro amperes to 10 amperes. So if you turn this side, it can be used to measure the currents. So these are the range of currents we can measure through this. And now if you turn the other side, we can measure resistance also. Starting from 200 ohms to 2 mega ohms of resistance, we can measure from this device. Now we use this as a voltmeter 
to measure a DC voltage, the maximum voltage that we can measure here is 1 volt. So, we will keep that to 2 hours range. Now, this is a voltmeter. It works like a voltmeter which can measure a DC voltage a maximum of 2 volts. So, let us see how to connect this. There are 3 terminals here. The black one will connect always to the common as negative and to measure voltage, resistance and current we will connect this side on. This is the terminal used to measure for large currents. We do not use that. Connect only for these two terminals. Now let us see how to connect the circuit. So this is the input source. So the positive and negative terminals. Let us connect these terminals to the circuit using external wires. So positive of the battery is connected. Negative side is also connected. Now VBE to measure the base emitter voltage we need a voltmeter. We make use of this multimeter. The negative, the black one is negative. So we will connect this side. Red positive will connect in the positive side. Next we need the micrometer to measure the base current. So from positive point to the positive of the micrometer and from negative side to negative of the micrometer. Next we need a milliameter to measure the collector current. Let us connect from positive to the positive of the meter from negative side to negative of the ammeter. So, my milliammeter is connected to measure collector voltage, collector current. Next, voltmeter to measure collector meter voltage. So, this is negative side from negative side to negative of the voltmeter from positive to positive of the voltmeter. Next, we need output source. Let us connect the positive of the battery and then the negative side. Okay, now we will see how to take the reading. So, after circuit connections, get it verified whether the connections are right or wrong. After verification, you can switch it on. Before switch on, make all the knobs to zero, then you switch on. So, all the voltages and currents are showing zeros. Now, first we will see the input characteristics. How to study the input characteristics. As I said, input characteristics are nothing but variation of input current IB with respect to the variation of input voltage VBE keeping the output VCE as a constant. So, let us set VCE constant. Where is VCE? This is the VCE which is shown here. This is the voltmeter. So, let us increase the output voltage to set it for 2 volts. Okay, we see 2 volts. Then we have to vary VBE in steps of 0.1 volts and we have to note down the base current. So, VBE is this and it is shown here. Let us increase the input voltage to 0.1 volt. So, for input voltage VBE 0.1 volt, the input current IB is 0. Let us note down for 0.1 volt of input VBE. The current IB is 0. Now let us increase it to 0.2. So for 0.2 volts, the current IB is 0. For 0.3, for 0.3 also, the input current IB is 0. Next 0.4. 0.4 also IB is 0. 
point five point five also zero next after point five increases to point five five so for point five five you can see that the current starts to flow and it is one micro ampere so up to point five it is zero after 0.55 it is 1 milli micro ampere next increase to 0.6 so for 0.6 the current is 6 micro amperes 6 micro amperes next 6.5 For 0.65, the current is 20, 20 microamperes. Next 0.7. So likewise we increase up to 0.8 or whatever the maximum. So for 0.8 volt we have got 124. So 0.8, 124 microamperes. Now we can observe that up to 0.5 the current was 0. After 0.55 the current starts to increase sharply. So when we plot a graph of the input current IB versus the input voltage VBE, we can see that up to 0.5 volts no current, after that current increases sharply. This is called input characteristic curve. Next we will see transfer characteristics. So for transfer characteristics, the transfer characteristics is nothing but variation of output current IC with respect to the variation of input current IB when the output voltage is kept constant. So since we are not using input voltages, we can remove this, this is no longer required, we can switch it off. So now we will keep the output VCA constant 2 volts and we will increase IB the base current, base current in steps of 10 microamperes and we will note down the output current IC. So let us start with the base current IB set it for 10 microamperes. Okay, base current IB is 10 microamperes and the collector current IC is 1 milliampere. So for base current IB 10 microamperes, IC is 1 milliampere when VC is 2 volts. Now let us increase it to 20 Yeah. For 20 microamperes of base current, the collector current is 2 milliamperes. Okay. Now let us increase it to 30. So 30 microampere base current is 4 milliampere and 40. For 40 microamperes of IB, the base current, next 50, for 50, IC is 7, 7 milliamperes. As we increase the base current, we can see that the collector current also increases. So when we plot a graph of the collector current IC with respect to the base current IB, we will get a straight line like this. So if we plot, I mean if we find the slope of the straight line, the slope AB by BC is nothing but the beta current amplification factor of the transistor. Now we will see the output characteristic curve. 
output characteristics means variation of the output current IC, IC with respect to the variation of e output voltage VCE when the input current is constant. So, that is for output characteristics we should keep the IB base current constant and we should vary VCE output voltage and we should note down the current IC. Okay, now let us set the input constant, input current IB constant 50 micro amperes. Okay, so IB is 50 micro amperes constant. Now let us increase VCE in steps of 0.1 volts and let us note down the IC collector current. For IB 50 micro amperes and VCE 0.1 volt, IC is 4 milliamperes. For 50 micro amperes of base current and VCE 0.1 volt, IC is 4 milliamperes. Now let us increase VCE for 0.2. So VCE 0 0.2 and IC is 6 milliamperes. Similarly, if we increase current voltage for 0.3, we can see that the collector current is 7 milliampere and for 0.4 also it is 7 milliampere and for 0.5 also it is and for 0.6 also 7 milliampere for 0.7 also 7 0.8 also 7 so as we increase the voltage VCE the collector current IC does not changes it remains constant as we increase the voltage it remains constant I 7 that is only in the initial 0.1, 0.2 it increases, afterwards it remains constant 7, 7, 7. So, so when we plot a graph of the IC collector current with respect to VCE, we can see that in the beginning that is in the 0.1 or 0.2 voltage the current increases, afterwards it remains constant. So this is called output characteristic curve. Next, the same procedure is repeated for the base current 75 microamperes and 100 microamperes. And we can observe that we will get similar curve for 75 and 100 microamperes. Only in the initial point it increases and afterwards it remains a constant. So these are called output characteristic curves of the transistor. From this output characteristic curve, we can find the beta, the current amplification factor of the transistor. So from the graph, if you extend this linear region, it will meet the y axis at one point, note down the value of that, that is IC1 and similarly for 75 microampere curve, extend this straight line to meet y axis, you will get another value of IC that is IC2 and from IB3 curve, you will get one more IC collector current that is IC3. So we have three values of ICs and three values of IBs. So combination of all these three using the formulas beta 1 IC3 minus IC2 divided by IB3 minus IB2 and beta 2 IC2 minus IC1 by IB2 minus IB1 and beta 3 IC3 minus IC1 divided by IB3 minus IB1. So if you calculate these values you will get three values of betas take the average, we will get average beta. Using that we can find alpha, alpha is given by beta by 1 plus beta. So now we have two values of beta, one from this calculation part, another from transfer characteristics slope that is from graph. So find out beta values from both the methods and enter in the result.